Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Furlong, and today we're talking about the structure of DNA and RNA. We know that DNA, and sometimes RNA, is the primary source of hereditary information. Remember that DNA is double-stranded, RNA is a single-stranded type of nucleic acid. And what it does is transmit this genetic information from one generation to the next. Just a little bit about this. DNA, the genetic information, is stored in the nucleus and is passed on to subsequent generations via the DNA molecules. Now, in a few cases, uh, the RNA molecules can do this. Before the DNA can be passed on from parent to offspring, though, it has to be packaged up into chromosomes which we can see here on the right. This is where the DNA is going to be wound around these special type of proteins called histone proteins. They're tightly packed together to form chromosomes. Now other organisms like viruses, for instance, can use RNA as their genetic material. And it can do the same thing of transmitting this information from one generation to the next. We know that prokaryotes and some eukaryotes can contain plasmids. Now these are small extra chromosomal double-stranded circular pieces of DNA molecules. So for instance, in a bacterium, they have one chromosome, but they could have several small plasmids. There would typically be a handful of genes on these plasmids, which can be passed on from one generation to the next. Now DNA and RNA does exhibit some nucleotide base pairings, and we found that this has been conserved all throughout evolution. So for instance, no matter what organism you're talking about, adenine always pairs with thymine or sometimes adenine pairs with uracil if we're talking about RNA, whereas guanine always pairs with cytosine. Now let's take a look at why these always pair with one another. If we take a look at the adenine molecule here, first of all, adenine, we can take a look at is what's called a double ring structure. Cytosine is a single ring structure. The same is true for cytosine and guanine. Guanine has a double ring, and cytosine has a single ring. But if you take a close look at how these molecules actually attach to one another, notice that adenine and cytosine form two hydrogen bonds, whereas cytosine and guanine end up forming three hydrogen bonds, which is why you can only get A's pairing with T's or U's and C's pairing with G's. And if you recall from an earlier video, the double ring structures, the guanine and the adenine, are called purines. The cytosine, thymine, and uracil have the double ring structures, and those are pyrimidines. And so you will always have a pyrimidine pairing with a purine. That is a very quick look at the structure of DNA and RNA, and I'll see you in class.